Hello and welcome back. I'm Nicole, a cottage witch, and today I thought I'd do a just sort of flip through of the unfolding path, maybe a vaguely reviewish video. Um, not an official review, I suppose, but we'll see what it turns out to be. I've never done a video like this before, so I'm not sure. This is the this is the box. If you haven't seen it, it's I really enjoy her artwork. It's beautiful. And I'd wanted this since it was uh, an indie deck and couldn't afford it at the time. So now that it's mass market, I'm very happy to have it. Um, I started a flip through and then stopped and started to do this video. So one thing about the guidebook that I noticed is it has messages that seem to be pretty good. Uh, but it doesn't have one thing I always appreciate in a guidebook, which is uh, descriptions of the artist's choices. Uh, and one of the things I loved about the first few cards I've looked at is the plant and animal representations on them. There are, I think, humans on every card. But especially when you get to the miners, there are more, more uh, plant and animal elements, and some of them are very Rider Waite Smith, uh, and then some of them <laughs> are a bit uh, a bit different. And just personally, I would have loved more of a a little description about that in the, in the guidebook. But it does have, I mean, it has fine messages. Um, there's nothing really, I think, wrong with with the guidebook. It has uh, some spreads and basics and stuff in the beginning that I've just sort of skipped. Because um, I don't tend to read those things in guidebooks. Um, but if that's interesting to you, there, there are those as well. Um, so that's the, the box in the guidebook. Um, yeah, and then these are the, the cards, and I just, I love the, one of my favorite things about them is actually all of the, the colors and the watercolor backgrounds. I think they are beautiful. Um, I enjoy the butterflies and the blue in that one. Um, maybe I will do it like the other way. There we go. I'm not really convinced if this is my favorite one, but it's got all the elements. So I don't, I mean, I don't think I dislike any of the cards that I've seen. Really, I love this one. She's so beautiful. Um, and I love that she's an older woman and with her long white hair, longish. Yeah, that's beautiful. The Empress is one of the cards that I'm sort of just fine with. Again, as a sort of herbalist student plant person, um, I would love to know more about the, well, the wheat is sort of um, fertility and, and that sort of thing. Um, but if these are, sometimes with artists, I don't know if, if the flowers are specific flowers, like if they know what they're drawing, perhaps she does, in which case I would have loved to have known what that is. Hmm, sort of image in the background, I hadn't noticed that before. Interesting. Um, there are a lot of symbols on foreheads and things, and I would have loved to have known more. More about those. Um, I do like all the Ver uh, various religious symbols on his. I can't tell if that's a scarf or part of the robe or what, but uh, sort of all uh, inter-religious inter harmony of some sort going on there. And I can get behind that. That's sweet. At least for this person, they seem like a potentially masculine, potentially ambiguous gender, so that's interesting. Hmm. 
not a hundred percent convinced by this. Again, I don't dislike it, but I'm not a hundred percent convinced by the giant tiger <laughs> for some reason. These look like poppies to me. I'm not sure what uh, what connection they have with strength. I'd have to look that sort of thing up. This is a beautiful card. I like her too. I like seeing uh, women older than me in, in decks. I'm not, I don't know if I'm quite middle-aged yet, although I'm getting there, <laughs> moving in that direction. And uh, I suppose probably some people consider me middle-aged, late 30s. Um, so I like seeing older people in these sort of positive role in the community of cards, positions, that's lovely. Uh, it is also a very diverse deck. There's some body diversity, there's a lot of racial diversity. Um, so that's lovely. She's got a, looks like an Egyptian symbol of some sort. Some of the traditional right away, but especially um, Thoth, Thoth uh, symbols, I'm not as familiar with because there's a lot of symbolism you can get into. And uh, and she's got more symbols on her face and I don't know what those mean. This is uh, one of the colors in this. It's beautiful. This is fun. I like this one. Irises. I'd have to look up irises and their association with temperance. That would be interesting. Okay, well, this is one of those other cards where I, you know, I don't necessarily dislike it, but I'm not convinced by it. I think it's the red skin <laughs> that I'm not convinced by. Um, I don't know what that symbol is, which, I, you know, just for me is where a guidebook um, with with artist choices would have been very helpful, but oh well. I love this card. It's beautiful. With the eight pointed stars in her hair. It's spectacular. I love this card too. The uh, crawfish tattoo and the, the moons on her forehead. See, sometimes I know what the symbols are on the forehead, but if I don't know, that's what I'm like. I guess I sh should <laughs> Google that in some cases, depending on, on which card I get. I haven't used this deck yet. I got it just yesterday, so. Sunflowers. That's beautiful. Oh, feathers. Interesting. And her eyes are very otherworldly. This is one of those cards where, because I grew up in such a fundamentalist Christian background, I haven't really settled on a understanding of this card that is not Christian influenced that that works for me. So this one's interesting because it doesn't look particularly religious to me. I have to look up what those dots mean if they mean anything. Um, interesting, beautiful uh, curvy woman. I can never remember what all these symbols are from. Uh, astrology, I think. I have to look those up. Not if that's that's not something I spent a lot of time, or really much time at all, <laughs> learning. This is a beautiful card, though. I like this card. Uh, all right, and we're into the wands. I assume that's the fire symbol. I always get the element symbols mixed up too, because they all they're all just triangles with. Some of them have lines through them, and I can never, for the life of me, remember <laughs> which one is which. Um, if I can't figure out what flower that's meant to be, I'll probably come up with my own um, plant associations. There seems to be some ivy of some sort on there as well. Interesting. Huh. 
this background I love the way that uh, the sunset is painted it's oops just sticking to my table here <laughs> that's really beautiful just those colors and the, ma the magic in the card it's really lovely ah, this is sweet <laughs> that's cute all right I can get with I can get behind this card here that works for me that's very sweet they just look so uh, joyful lovely hmm I think this is the first one without uh, faces in it. Hmm, interesting. This is one of those cards where there's always sort of a clash of whether of of a, of um, something to do with a decision, a choice between competition, which can be healthy, and collaboration. Um. The lights go in, so I'm just keep tilting it uh, to certain ways to see it better. Um, it's a beautifully done card. I'm not really sure. It's interesting. I have to think about that one for a while. This is nice. I like that there's a disability represented. Um, I'm autistic, which I don't know how you would represent that visually because <laughs> there's not really a look to it. Um, but I sort of already pre always appreciate when other disabilities are, are represented. Just sort of, I think it helps the whole community. With the laurels and the bouquet of flowers, that's beautiful. Hmm. Should start, um, only in the last couple Olympics, I think I started watching the Paralympics more. I mean, they've started airing it more, which is great. At least in Canada, I don't know about other places. That's fun. Definitely, she's fairly intense. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of this. It looks like he's skateboarding or surfing or something, but he's... Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's taking him in a certain direction. seems to be, I always pictured them going this way, but it seems to be going the other way in this card, which is fine, but it took me a minute to, to register what, what was happening. Uh, interesting. And this. I don't know about this one. Hmm. It's not as clear to me she's doing. Hmm. I'd have to think about that for a while. Uh, this is interesting. The bag of... It's a bit too heavy for her up those stairs. Is that a key she's got around her neck? I think it is. And these will be the court cards. I did notice um, when I first glanced at it, it doesn't have ones actually written anywhere on it, you, but it's, I think, it's pretty clear from the depiction that these, this is the page of ones, for instance. I'm, I haven't looked at the other, the other suits yet, but uh, I wonder what that little flower is. It's a tiny little thing. This is one of those moments where I want to zoom in on it <laughs> like you can on a phone. And have a closer look. Hmm. That's good. I like this one. She's beautiful. That's a pretty cool depiction. Yeah, that's pretty cool too. Huh? Yeah. Okay. As uh, as court cards go, I think I I think I quite like those four. I'm not, uh, I haven't been using tarot long enough to have um, 
a deep enough understanding of the chords, for instance, to be able to teach anybody what they mean or anything like that. Um, but I'm starting to be able to understand them for myself. And uh, yeah, uh, I like those depictions. They make sense to me in some sort of way that I can't uh, describe exactly. Oh well. This, I think, is a lotus. Beautiful. I wonder if this mudra, this hand position, means something. Hmm. Cute. Yeah, I do like how diverse this deck is. I remember when I originally saw a flip through of the indie version. I appreciated that as well. It's nice. Just feels more real, you know. Feels less like um, and grapes and pumpkins and everything. That's nice. Ooh, I like their hair. <laughs> um, yeah, it feels real in a way that like, I've only been to New York once in my life, but if you walk down the streets, it's incredibly diverse. And then you, if you watch a TV show set in New York, sometimes it's just straight white people. <laughs> And there's there's a sort of cognitive dissonance for me with that, where it just, it doesn't reflect reality, really. Um, unless you're maybe in a Wall Street boardroom or some someplace I've never been, I don't know. Maybe they're all straight white men, uh, still. Wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, exactly surprise me. Interesting. Yeah, this is nice. Um, but it always strikes me as a little bit un real <laughs> um like you have to work to get to that to that place so this this feels more like real life even though i do live in a city that's i mean definitely majority white but still i mean a fair bit of diversity you just i think in the the western world now that's just how it is you know unless you isolate yourself and only associate with people who are like you in whatever way, then you're going to meet, you know, gay people and disabled people and all that sort of thing. And so it's nice to see any sort of art, uh, literature, whatever that reflects a relatable sort of world. This is very sweet. I like this one. She's cute. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, if I had a pile going for cards I like, dislike, and sort of neutral about, this is probably a neutral. I don't like or dislike it. Interesting. He's got his hat and his coat on, or she, or whomever. <laughs> they. I don't know. Um, they have nail polish on. That's fun. Interesting. Keeps it a little bit um, flexible, I suppose. It is nice. Very open. Receptive sort of state. It's interesting because all of the... They all... This color flower, yeah. This color of flower runs through a lot of these. Not all of them. A lot of them. Where was that lotus? This one. But they're obviously not all the same flower, but they're... Oops, that's the back. Huh. Um, in the same sort of color uh, scheme. Or whatever you call it. I'm not an artist. Um, I'm not even all that good at describing art or anything like that. I just know what I like when I see it. That's a very sweet little family. Hmm. An older page. That's interesting. Huh. I kind of like that. Might have to think about that for a bit. And it's very Knight of Cups. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like this too. She's got a lotus on her cup. He have a little fish on his shirt. 
some other kind of fish. I'm not up on my uh, types of fish. <laughs> Interesting. So this is a bit of a different color scheme here for the swords. <coughs> or color uh, tone, I guess, or something. Um, if any art student ever watches this that can correct my language. <laughs> so it's sort of sort of balancing on her hand somehow. Interesting. Alright. That's an interesting. Kind of like this one. I really like that because that's this has got to be one of my favorite colors of all time. That really sort of dark blue indigo that's got hints of purple in it. Love that. Ooh. She's having a hard time. Oops. Yeah, I'm always thinking of wanting to know what the different types of <laughs> plants are, but that's me and my particular preoccupation. She's having a hard time too. These figures in the background are interesting. So this is not so much that she's um, deceiving somebody, but maybe she's been deceived. She's certainly been through something. That's an interesting interpretation. How's that? Oh, there's a cute little dog in there. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I love these. The watercolor backgrounds are so, so beautiful. This little uh, vaguely Mask of Zorro thing going on here. I mean, the depictions aren't, they're pretty typical Rider Waite Smith, I think. But they do have, for me, more of an emotional connection than your usual Rider Waite Smith. And she's not in a, she's not in a bed or anything in this one. She's sitting somewhere, indescribable place. <laughs> is, what's, is there like ink or something on her? Arms and the swords, I'm not really sure. Um, oh. This person isn't faring so well either. <laughs> well, I mean, that fits. Oh, this is a nice page of uh, swords. The little birds. Interesting queen of swords, too. That's a, I don't know, some sort of bird. Yeah, they all have birds in them. Interesting. Different kinds of birds, I'm not sure. Which ones? All right, last suit of uh, pentacles. So, I assume that's the symbol for uh, Earth. Again, I never remember. Um, that's it's lovely. It's fine. That one. Interesting. He's got a ship pin. Huh. There are some cute little RWS references there that they would be. And some apples. Nice. That's quite a nice depiction. I like that one. I 
I'm not beekeeping is not for me. I've come to appreciate bees uh, more than I ever thought I would, uh, being scared of them as a kid, but I will not be beekeeping. Oh, this is sad. There's no, um, this is an interesting one because there's not the usual um, church or whatever symbol of exclusion in the background, but he's clearly feeling sad. And doesn't look like he's faring too well. Alright. Yeah, this is cute. Okay. I like this one. Sunflowers and the tiny little seedling. Nice. Oh, she's a ballet dancer. That's pretty. I do like the, the fluidity, the fluidity in a lot of the line work in a lot of these cards. Not all of them, obviously, but a lot of them. I enjoy that. There is a white peacock in that card for some reason. I wonder what the symbolism of that is. That's a cute little family. <laughs> She's adorable. <laughs> Their little sneakers on in her dress. These, oh, those are crystals in the, above the coins. Cute. And the court cards. I'm not sure what I think about his expression. I'm not, I don't really know what to make of it. Or her expression, for that matter. I don't know. It's got a little potted plant. <laughs> and what's in this one? Apples, pears, a rabbit. Interesting. And the king of pentacles. So well, that's my uh, little walk through, flip through, not really review <laughs> um, of these cards. I won't uh, shuffle them on camera because I'm really not very good at that, but they're, they look like they'll be all right to shuffle. They're fairly, fairly thick, but still fairly flexible. So that seems all right to me. I'm not a I'm not one of the cardstock expert YouTubers, though. <laughs> That's not my area, really. Um, so I couldn't tell you if it's... Like, it feels like decent quality. It doesn't feel as amazing as some of the indie decks I've gotten. But it feels fine. You know, like, I don't, I don't dislike it or anything. And I really only dislike cardstock that feels um, either, like, paper or cardboard. And this doesn't really, to me, feel like those, so I'm good with this. The backs are pretty cute, too. I like those. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's all for this video. So thank you for uh, watching, and I'll see you next time.